In today's video, I'm going to talk about metabolic rate, how you can lose body fat, make sure your metabolism is still good, and how we can pay attention to your calories, your macros, and reaching your goals safely. Hey guys, this is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I'm going to go over some pretty complex topics when it comes to fat loss. Some things that I do that I think very few people understand. Very few people understand the use of how to keep your metabolism in a good spot what basal metabolic rate is, how we can kind of use that as our number. And for anyone interested, if you just want some basic information, I have a free calorie calculator that I'll put on the screen here. It's got some great features like how many meals per day, you know, based on how active you are, your age, all these things are kind of tied in there. And you can go check that out and it'll give you a lot of information. But I want to start with today's question on Instagram. It's a really good question. It's a deep question that I really want to get into so you guys can understand how I do things as a coach, how I do things for my competitors, for myself, to make sure that I'm able to lose body fat, keep it off, keep my muscle, and stay lean. Often I'm confused when I think of BMR and calorie deficit. Based on some internet calculators, my BMR is in 1,930. So if I do nothing all day and eat 1,430 calories, it's a 500 calorie deficit. Likewise, if I work out and burn, as an example, 300 calories, then I can eat, say, 1730 and stay in a 500 calorie deficit. Is this the right thinking? Another question I got today was, how do I get information about the upcoming Transformation Challenge? Yes, our $25,000 Transformation Challenge starts at the end of July. So yes, we will be starting a new Transformation Challenge at the end of July, giving away $25,000 to the winners. And if you're interested, you can look at the information below. We provide customized nutrition, customized training, we're also going to provide a group for you guys where you can go in and get excited. We're going to provide live videos every week, answer your questions. So it's going to be led by a group of people that are very excited that are on the same journey as you. And I promise you the motivation from that group uh, is very tangible and it creates great results. And if you guys know anything about me, you know that I believe that there has to be a reason for you to start your fat loss goal. Whether that be you just want to get healthy, whether it be you want to get on a bodybuilding stage like me, maybe I'll put some videos in here. But that, that drive, that motivation, that reason for making those decisions has to be present and a transformation challenge does a wonderful job of that. We've done many of them now and I'm very proud of the, the results that we've gotten and the people that we've helped. So let's talk a little bit about fat loss in general. So here we have the graph of my friend here eating 1930 calories. Now at this position, this is where his basal metabolic rate would be. Now I'll link a study below if you guys aren't familiar with what happens to your basal metabolic rate, but as you lose weight, so as we go along this line here, we're going from 200 pounds down to 150. I just made up some numbers. Your basal metabolic rate will actually decrease as you lose body fat. Why? Because your body becomes more efficient. It doesn't require as much energy to run. Okay, it's like driving your car down the highway and you've got a trailer attached to it. Well, if you drop a couple thousand pound trailer, your car is gonna be more efficient. It's gonna require less fuel to run. That's how the human body works. Now, this decline in basal metabolic rate it should be pretty predictable, but what the research shows, and I'll put the study below for you guys so you can kind of get an idea there, is that it drops at a rate that is not predictable. It actually drops much faster than we would expect it to. The basal metabolic rate drops much more rapidly than the body fat comes off. So what happens is we hit a plateau much earlier than we would think. At 1,530 calories, we should be able to go for a while without hitting a plateau, but because this change in basal metabolic rate, because of the change in our metabolic rate in our body, we see these strange things. And that's why when someone says to me, oh, it's easy to lose body fat, you just move more and eat less. Yes, but if you're not aware of how the body is gonna to respond to that, you're gonna get frustrated. And when you get frustrated, what are you gonna do? Ah, screw it. You're gonna stop exercising, you're gonna overeat, and you might even end up in a worse position. Most predictions of obesity come with the people that have tried to lose weight the most. Well, why is that? Well, it's probably the method that they're using to lose weight, right? Also the fact that the people that are overweight try to diet more frequently. So there could be some correlational issues there, but the idea is that weight loss is more complex than move more, eat less, okay? Yes, all weight loss is derived from a caloric deficit, but what makes up a caloric deficit? When we see basal metabolic rate change, what happens? The changes are changes to energy expenditure, okay? So you're taking in less calories, What's the natural response to that? Most people are gonna be tired. They're gonna burn less calories throughout the day. That non-exercise activity thermogenesis that we get from being highly energetic and moving our hands and getting up and going down the stairs and playing with our kids, you might move less. So although you have restricted your calories, you might have also restricted your life. That's a very common change to BMR. Now you're changing the equation, right? What about 
mitochondrial efficiency. Our body gets more efficient at the movements that we do, okay? These are the adaptations that we see when someone can run a seven minute mile and then they practice and practice and run and run and now they can run a six minute mile. They've gotten more efficient. Therefore, their body is burning less calories doing the same activities. This is something that happens when we restrict calories. Also, circulating hormones will change. As we know, hormones are gonna have a big impact on our overall well-being. So as hormones are changing, it can negatively impact our energy, the calories that we're burning. So this basal metabolic rate is a very dynamic number. When someone says to me, oh, coach, I wanna know what my maintenance calories are. Maintenance is a moving target, okay? If you're maintaining your weight on 3,000 calories and you lose 50 pounds, your maintenance calories are not 3,000 calories anymore, okay? It might be much closer to 2,000 or 1,500. Who knows, depending on how you approached it. But the idea being is that there are changes going on. And I don't want to confuse you guys, but as a coach, I've become very familiar with this. Over a decade of doing it, dieting down myself, I'll show you some videos here, I have learned how to adjust a plan when we hit a sticking point. So what do we do when we hit a sticking point here? The typical approach for most coaches is, hey, let's drop some cardio, let's drop some calories, sorry, let's increase the cardio, let's just make that deficit bigger. Well, that may work to a degree, but at a certain point, you're gonna have no energy to move, you're gonna be very efficient, and your hormones are gonna be in the tank. So let me introduce you guys to the diet break. Now, if you haven't heard of the diet break, um, it's something that I've been using for five or six years. I use it with my competitors. Um, it's, it's a tool that I feel has given me an advantage as a coach um, on the bodybuilding stage, as a competitor on the bodybuilding stage, and as someone who helps lifestyle clients and has a team of now 27 coaches, we have tools at our disposals that very few coaches use. Most people are just gonna say, hey, you're not losing weight, let's add some cardio, let's reduce some calories, let's, let's eat cleaner, right? Let's, let's eat less. But the problem can be if you get your calories too low, right, your fats too low, your carbs too low, you might negatively impact these things, your movement. We wanna focus on making sure your hormones are good throughout a fat loss, fat loss diet. And this is where I've come up with this system. Now it's taken me a long time to do this um, because I've just paid attention to what's happening to my competitors. Now, coaching bodybuilding competitors, the advantage there is that they're very detailed with their approach, okay? If I have them eating 200 carbs and 50 fat and 150 protein, I know that's what they're eating. Why? Because they're getting ready for a bodybuilding show. So if I, the week after that, tell them to eat 300 carbs and 60 fat, and reduce their cardio, I know essentially they're gonna be like patients in a metabolic ward. They're going to be hitting their numbers exactly like I want them to. And so I've seen some really cool things where I've actually, so you see the typical approach here with the 1930 as the BMR, you see where the, the basal metabolic rate starts to come down and we've got our calories set low. But if I bring the calories back up in the middle of the dieting phase, right? We hit a plateau, we're not dropping anymore from here. I bring calories up for as much as a week or two, right? drop cardio down. What does this do? Well, the goal is to maintain weight. You've got less body fat, so now what we wanna do is increase these things. Energy expenditure, okay? We wanna increase circulating hormones. We also might improve our sleep, which is gonna have a downstream benefit for cortisol, which is gonna have a downstream benefit for some of our hormones. So as much as most people, when they want to lose weight, wanna go straight for the goal, right? They wanna go from 200 to 150. They don't wanna stop on the way. I promise you, as a bodybuilding coach, as a <laughs> competitor myself, the results that I see for people that take these diet breaks, and I'll explain how to do that, has been life-changing. Why? Because when we get to our goal weight, we haven't been dieting so hard for so long that we're basically in the crapper. We have no energy, our hormones are a wreck, and now that we've reached our goal, guess what's most likely to happen? We're gonna stuff our faces with food. We're gonna be so tired, we're gonna go out and eat. We're gonna feel bad that we ate and we've put on a few pounds. So that what do we do? We just continue that cycle and then we end up back where we started or even heavier. However, I don't have that problem anymore. As a coach of competitors, my competitors get down to stage weight, they diet down, and they actually can stay there with their calories up close to what they were before they started the diet. Now, there will come a time where we have to put on some body fat for overall health and well-being, but the point is, you can see some magical things if you don't rush fat loss. If you don't think every week I need to be losing two to three to four pounds. If you hit a sticking point, if you notice your sleep is a problem, if you notice your energy expenditure is low, if you start to feel hormonally like you're having a problem. For women, it's very easy to tell. Why? Because you might have an eruption of your cycle, that amenorrhea. For men, it might also be easy to tell. Why? 
because you're more interested in food than you are interested in sex. Okay. So there are things you can do to tell energy is low. Strength is low. Maybe it's time for a diet break. What is a diet break? Again, it's not bringing your calories up to your previous maintenance, right? It's increasing your calories by 20 to 25%. I usually do it in the form of carbs and fats. Protein stays pretty stable, but I also will drop the cardio in half. You didn't mention cardio in your plan here, but the idea that we can simply take away 500 calories and lose weight forever, wrong. You're going to get stuck. And when you get stuck and you've already cut 500 calories off your diet, what's next, right? You're going to end up doing three, four hours of cardio a day. You're going to get mitochondrial efficiency and you're not going to get the benefit of doing three or four hours of cardio. Why? Because your body has adapted that. Now you're going to get down to a thousand calories. Now you're, this is where you see some people that have to go through some extreme weight loss protocols, even to lose one pound. They've gone through this process so many times without actually taking the time to use diet breaks, to give themselves a week or two of recovery in the midst. This is, I feel, the future of weight loss. Okay. I've been doing this for years now. In fact, I believe I introduced it into the competition world. Um, you know, as far as, I, as far as I know, if you go back and look at my older videos, but I'm seeing things now that shouldn't work. I'm seeing things now that are amazing. I'm actually seeing people on diet breaks drop one to two to pounds throughout the process. Even my lifestyle clients that are very meticulous are able to go into a diet break phase, spend two, three, sometimes a month, be the same weight or lower and be eating a lot more food. Guess what happens when we go to lose body, body fat again? It's really easy, okay? Because we're not putting ourselves in such a place where we're risking muscle loss, energy expenditure, and hormonal issues. Whether you're a competitor or just someone interested in fat loss, you need to pay attention to taking recovery weeks or diet breaks throughout the process, okay? Hopefully this helps you, my friend. Um, I wanna get more into this. This is the stuff that I love doing. You know, I work with my clients on a very close basis, but these are the things that I get to see because I've been doing this for a decade and I'm doing things in a manner, well, not many people are doing, frankly. All right, guys, talk to you soon.